After the intro, we continue our journey. With Spring Boot 3.0.0 Data JPA. Today we are creating one table in our H2 database. After we start the project, we test the project with Spring Boot's command line runner. We are back in Eclipse and can go over the custom code. As you can see, the member class has changed a lot. Let's start at the top. First we have the entity annotation. This annotation is needed to allow Spring Data JPA to create a table in our database. The name attribute is optional but can be useful. Next we have the table annotation. Here we can specify the name of the table. We also use the unique constraints here to indicate that the email address can only appear once in the table. The next annotation is Builder. This annotation is from Lombok and is useful to create new members. More on this annotation later. The other annotations at class level are all from Lombok and serve to create getters and setters and the constructors. The ID field has a few annotations. The ID annotation is essential. The other annotations are used to generate the ID automatically. Each field also has a column annotation. This allows various settings, but not essential. The next class is a new class, Member Repository. This class extends JPA Repository and is used to make the connection between the database and our project. All standard methods are present to work with our database. We have also already created two additional methods. Find by email and find all by last name. JPA allows these additional methods to be created without the need to write queries. It is also possible to create methods with custom queries. The last class to go over is the main class. Specifically, the Bean command line runner. As already told in the intro of this series, this code is executed automatically after starting the project. First, we create three new members, each of which we save to the database. Here you can see the use of the Lombok Builder. You will also notice that we do not specify an ID. In the builder, the ID is automatically created by the database. Then we do a find all to retrieve all members from the database and display it in the console. The next step is to modify the member with ID 1. As you can see we do now specify an ID 1 long. We use the same saves method as for creating new members. But because we pass an ID with it, JPA knows it is an update. Then we do a finfall again to retrieve all the members from the database and display them in the console. Finally, we do a find by email and a find by last name. To see which methods are all available, after member repository press, control space. Eclipse will then list all available methods with a brief explanation. Now we can look at the console what our project did with the database. In red you see all custom logs, in black all logs from Hibernate used by Spring Data JPA. First we save the three members. Hibernate creates a new ID and insert the data to the database. After the three members are saved we do a select to retrieve the list of members, which we then print to the console. Then update the data. Hibernate searches the member with the ID 1, changes the data and then writes it back with an update. Then we do a new find all, which we then write to the console. After that there are the find by email and find all by last name. Finally, we can open the H2 database console to see if all the data has been properly written to the database. In the left column you can see all the fields, the indexes, and the sequences to create the ID automatically. In the right column you can run a query to display the data. This was it for part 1, thanks. Thank you. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.